Hey guys, today is hmm, Thursday, the 4th of February, I think. It might be the 5th or the 3rd, but who cares? It's been a really long time since I've talked to you, and I know that, but I've not been in a good place. You may have realised, you may not. You may have just thought she's quiet, living her life, da -da 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 -da. but I'm here to update you a little bit and to admit things that I'm ashamed of and hopefully to start my recovery process. I'm currently in a rehabilitation centre, a recovery, an addiction recovery centre in Banbury, where I will be for seven days in isolation um, due to COVID, but I have on uh, Zoom sessions medication as I'd be detoxing from alcohol. I've never hidden the fact that I've <clears throat> drunk alcohol excessively since Harry passed away. I think during the first lockdown and then e that easing and being able to get away and Aggie and meet with my wids and my support people, everybody was okay. And I was, I was coasting, I was doing okay, but Christmas came, almost couldn't make it to lose and not sure I would have coped with that. I was trying to pull back my drinking at that point. Um, in limiting how much I drank, got back from Louise's. I did really well over Christmas, actually. And um, I'd already decided or, you know, a very kind friend had said to me, I need to get some help. And she's right. I got a counsellor in November. Things started tumbling and crashing down on me. And um, so I started to have bereavement counselling with this wonderful lady in Newbury. I think I've had four weeks of counselling from her and um i this this last lockdown just got worse i just couldn't see any point of not drinking i couldn't see any point of trying to limit myself why put pressure on yourself you're stuck indoors what the fuck else is there to do you know that kind of stuff and it ended up to be honest i was drinking three bottles of wine a night and that's a disgusting amount i can't even imagine what my insides must be like um i drank so much still only in the evenings i wasn't a morning drinker um but i was drinking so much i probably haven't made it to my bed since christmas um i get so drunk and i black out and i black out on the sofa and i wake up at whatever time three four five in the morning and then i'll take my sorry ass to bed telling myself every single day i'm not going to drink tonight and that i can control this but clearly i can't and you know i think my I've been saying this and kicking it around for two years, you know, I'm going to end up in rehab. So here I am. Proof. I did it. Talked myself into it. But anyway, um, I'm here for a 28 day program. So I do seven days in isolation with Zoom meetings. After that, I go into another lodge in Guildford where I will then be in a group setting and be able to work on this 12 step process. It is based around the 12 steps of Alcoholic Anonymous. What you also don't know is that I did take myself for an alcohol, alcohol and Alcoholics Anonymous um, um, meeting once, but the minute, anybody who knows me, the minute they start saying about, um, God, see ya. Um, I now realize it's not really based on God or you can put it in whatever context you want. So I put it that it's, you know, it's, it's, um, it's gonna be for me and God's gonna be, if, if it's mentioned or whatever, I need to just ignore that and do what I need to do to get through this because the steps clearly work and yeah, this is what I'm gonna learn. So I came here yesterday, my sister very kindly dropped me off, Sadie, who's been a massive support to me also since Harry's died. Um, so yeah, 11 o'clock yesterday, dropped here. My first night last night without alcohol, probably my first proper night in two years. Um, wasn't too bad. I accepted a drug which helps with withdrawals just in case I was feeling a bit sweaty and shaky. Um, and they gave me sleeping pills, which I, I did sleep about half past 10, watched two movies, and then I went to sleep about half past 10. And then my neighbour, who's young, northern, and clearly angry, was having a row with somebody on the phone at one o'clock and then five o'clock. So I didn't get much sleep, but I did. They gave me more sleeping tablets and that's fine. Um, the room's quite nice, so it's a private um, rehabilitation centre. Obviously, 
I've got my main people. I've got my little home from home down there. And yeah, everything's just sit there and do my Zooms. I've got a really nice bathroom, which has got an automatic light, which sometimes doesn't come on until you're right the way in here. Yeah, it's a really nice big bathroom. Um, yeah, it's, I'm feeling positive, you know, the fact I've chosen to come and do this because I can't carry on the way I'm going. Uh, I haven't even told you probably the reason is the more I drink, the more I don't want to be around. And I guess I've been suicidal on a couple of occasions and that scared me. It scared me to a point that I don't want to die. When I wake up, I don't want to die. But when I drink that much alcohol, all I can think of is Howie and how I miss him and how I'd like to join him. So I need to work on that in my head. I need to work on that without alcohol. I need to deal with my grief. I need to somehow be okay and not rely on that alcohol to avoid grief. So yeah, I think that's why I'm here. Um, I don't want to die. I, I've got a lot to live for. I've got a hell of a lot to live for. I've got the most two beautiful grandchildren in the entire world that I adore. And I've got two lovely children. I've got lots of friends and lots of people behind me for support. And I know that I'm a stick that I can't reach out. I don't know why I've put myself in here rather than actually phoning people when I'm feeling suicidal because I'm clearly not the person to ask for help. Um, but that's me trying to be transparent. Whether, whether I post this or not, I don't know. So today I've had my first Zoom. It was very interesting listening to other people's stories about why they're here or how many times they've been here or what their poison is. And um, I'm now working on my first piece of work, handwritten. It will be my life story, hey, which is facing demons, as you can all imagine, if you go back and you have to try and pick up the parts of your life that you remember because it's only ever going to be trauma or euphoria. So it's shaped you to who you are today. And then I guess I'm going to have to work on that. Um, I know a lot of people speaking today on the Zoom are struggling because they've written their life story and it's brought up a lot of things, traumas and, and flashbacks and stuff. Um, I think I'm going to be OK. I think I talk about my story enough to not allow that to destroy me. I'm feeling really positive and I'm feeling really confident that I'm going to do this. I have quit everything in my life and I can honestly say at this point I intend to stick out 28 days no matter how tough it gets. I've got my pictures of my granddaughter and my husband up there and I know that they are rooting for me. So I also know my bestie Louise is and I've got my mate Rowan there too. He's my good mate and a massive support so I couldn't do this without them at the end of the day so yeah where I'm at. I will keep you posted. I am writing a journal as well and I might just try and do these little vlogs and, and see how I go. Um, I hope I get a better night tonight and I don't want to scratch her eyes out. She's only young and I guess she's really struggling in her detox but you have to be careful when you're in a place like this not to you know respect other people's privacy and the fact it's one o'clock in the morning or five o'clock in the morning. I think my only bitchy side came out was I had a shower and then I blow dried my hair at seven because I knew she'd gone to sleep. So I hope she heard it. Anyway, that's just the bitchy part of me. You know me. <sighs> Two rights don't make a wrong, right? So, one full day sober. And it's the start of the rest of my life. And Rowan's words in my card were really nice. And it says, a winner never quits and a quitter never wins. Never a truer word said. Anyway, I'm going to leave you on that note and hopefully... I'll just vlog along and I'm going to stay this positive and I'm going to be okay. Nice to talk to you all. Bye for now.